This is a 17 inch Star Logic LCD monitor. Uh, you're seeing it upside down because that's how I got the camera situated. Here's what it does. We'll do that again. Obviously, it doesn't work, but the LCD is okay. There's obviously something wrong with the lights. So, we're going to open this guy up and we're going to see if we can do anything with this, which is a like a 15 inch cold cathode. PC mod kit that I bought on eBay for I think I spent like 10 bucks on this uh, got it in white we're gonna test this before we're even messing with it um, this plugs in to a standard power in a PC and then it just has a switch on it so we'll light this up and show you that oh look the innards of an aging computer so these are our cold cathode tubes the power supply for the kit this is the plug. We're just going to find a uh, random plug laying around here and hopefully I don't short anything out. That would be bad. Uh, we're going to plug you in. And apparently I already had it on. So it's a little it's a little cool in here. Uh, this one's a little slow to, to light up, but these are working. We're going to turn you off wherever the thing is and then we'll move along. So this is a mega close-up of the inverter board that I'm replacing in this video. I refer to this as the cold cathode power supply throughout the video. This is actually an inverter board. And something to know about these is that these boards put out, I think, something in the neighborhood of 600 volts to the cold cathode tubes. So let's not be foolish about safety when you're doing this. Uh, another thing that we do throughout the video is I'm replacing this broken board with the power supply or inverter from the cold cathode kit that I purchased. That kit uh, did not have the horsepower really required to run the monitor. We'll show you how that worked out um, and you can make some of your own decisions. If I had done this again what I would have done is look this board over and entered any unique numbers into a search engine where I would have determined that if I punch this number in, this board is available used for 20 bucks with a 30 day guarantee. Um, the board for this monitor is available. The board for your monitor might not be available, in which case you still might be interested in exploring the cold cathode kit repair. Um, in any event, this video still is valid to kind of explore what's going on in the back of a monitor and if you did want to use the cold cathode kit so we'll show you how that repair went down and then we'll continue with the repair after that this is the same 17 inch star logic monitor post repair I've put a different background on this so that you can see that it doesn't quite have the horsepower that I was hoping for it turns out that there is four cold cathode tubes and not two of them and we're only using two of them so this is about 50 percent capacity uh, might have been better to have a second kit or ultimately just try and find a new board but so we're just going to uh, carry on with the repair regardless and you can watch along so this is the back of the monitor this is a back cover this should have come off this is a metal plate that covers up the main circuit board for the unit there's a handful of plugs on here. This is the plug for the actual LCD unit. That needs to come out and gets tucked through. This was the power for the cold cathode unit, which obviously is hooked up to something else right now. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't have pulled that so hard. This is the um, this goes to the controls. Look at the buttons and such on the front. This is for the speakers, and then uh, this this does not need to come out. We can pull all these off and then come around to the other side in just a second. We flip the monitor over. There were some screws in the back that we take off, and we, of course, pop this bezel off, which they always come off really peacefully, and nothing gets broken, which is awesome. There's some obviously some screws around the perimeter here, this thing needs to come up. We've already taken the clip off the back. We've already pushed the connector through. This is the old, these are the connections for where the cold cathodes 
went into the power supply, which is right there. We take them off, and this can be removed. And it's at this point where the cold cathode power box is under there. We get that off, and obviously this is all going to go bye-bye. So that's where it's at. The three major components. Um, you don't need to take the LCD apart or any of that kind of stuff. So how this is going to end up is this guy is just going to be having a little having a sit there when we put this together, and we'll see that if I don't uh, interject. This something. is the LCD panel which has been liberated. As you can see, on the ends is a collection of cables here, and there's a collection of cables here, which I have not uh, destroyed at all. There's two connectors and there's four sets of wires. As it turns out, this monitor does not have two, but it has four cold cathode tubes in it. We've only got power for two cold cathode tubes, so um, that's all we're going to do, and that's too bad. So we've taken this off, and what you're, what you're wanting to, to get at, this is the power supply for the existing cold cathode tubes that are in the monitor. This power supply is no more. This is a goner, but we would like to be able to pull 12 volts, which there's probably 12 volts in here. We'll try and pull 12 volts to provide power to the, uh, the new power supply, which we'll be visiting in uh, just a second. All right, so this is our LCD panel. That's the power supply. That's the new power supply. These are the two white wires coming off one of the two plugs. And hopefully you can see in this kind of creepy pile is that this is the pink and the white for the one plug. And this is the black and the blue for the other one. And I've just connected them. It doesn't, apparently doesn't matter whether you hook up, um, what order you hook the white and the black wires up in here. And you may have different colors. And uh, hopefully that won't be a disaster for you. So we're just going to turn this on, and you can see that the uh, screen lights up a little bit. That's just one of the, the uh, CFL's cold, excuse me, one of the cold cathode lamps in the monitor. There's two of them. We're going to do, there's, there's one here, and then there's one coming back. We're going to do two of them, and I'm going to stick with the same colors. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, we're just going to do it. All right, so this is the back of our LCD panel. I've taken, I've cut the plugs off of the cold cathodes, which came with the kit that I bought. This is the power supply. Obviously, we pulled that, we pulled this plastic case off of it, and soldered them to one of the two pairs on either end, both top and bottom. So now the trick is to get 12 volts to this inside the case of the monitor and then just put it all together and we're good. I've turned this on. It does light the CFLs up, uh, excuse me, the cold cathode and um, so we're going to win. All right, this is the back of the monitor. Um, this is the dead power supply for the cold cathode tubes in the LCD. The LCD is not in on the other side. It's not plugged in here. I've turned this on so that we've got power to this. What we're going to try and do is find 12 volts that goes to this so that we can pipe it into the new power supply. Black tends to be ground, so we're going to go with that. And we're just going to kind of feel around here. So we've got 12 there. Got 12 there. Got 7 there. The problem with this repair is that you're going to lose the on-screen brightness controls and you're only going to get one setting which is on. That's going to be okay. If uh, we understood these, we understood what comes out of here a little bit better, maybe that could be changed in future. Probably not. Uh, another thing that uh, I noticed here is that these are reversed of what I thought they were going to be, where it turns out the black is actually the positive on this. So moral of the story is um, I'm getting 12 volts out of this thing, like it or not but you gotta watch the polarities. So we'll start hooking this thing up. 
So this is the old power supply for the cold cathode tubes. If I could do this again, I would probably spend a little bit of time to see if I could actually get a replacement for this board, which I just didn't even think about it, but um, that might have been pretty inexpensive or not available. I don't know. This is the new little dinky power supply for the kit that I bought. This is the box that it was in. I'd like to be able to fit this in here because it's got some nice shielding functions and it's already set to fit in there, but it just it just doesn't it just doesn't fit right and there's um, there's solder points under here that I don't want to shorten out. So I'm just gonna go with I'm gonna go with the little blue box and we're gonna have that dancing around in the back of our monitor. In testing this, which it does light the monitor up from um, the power supply within within the monitor, did test it, it does work. One thing that I noticed is that it's possible that not only do you lose the on-screen brightness functions, but it appears as if you're not actually able to turn the um, CFLs, the cold cathode tubes, off. So you might need to have an external switch on your actual monitor. I will see what happens when this all comes together. But uh, yeah, it seems to be another exciting development in the land of replacing power supplies. So we'll move a little forward with this and we'll... Uh, Show you so this is our final uh, with the 17 inch StarLogic monitor. This is a, a paint window, an S paint window with a canvas that I've opened up to cover as much of the screen as possible. Um, you know, I guess you can make your own decisions as to whether this is the kind of monitor repair you want or not and uh, hopefully you know how I got here.